while people who are into cars making stuff and metal enthusiasts. Today we're exploring the universe of shielded metal arc welding, which is literally the stick welding, which is among the most flexible and commonly used welding processes. Be it fixing a broken fence, building a custom metal wonder, or getting ready for your next apocalyptic scenario, shielded metal arc. Welding will be your faithful friend. Nevertheless, before we switch on the welder and generate a spectacular shower of sparks, let us first explain the basic stuff and then make you familiar with this great technique. So grab a seat, put on your virtual safety glasses, and let's weld. Gearing up for glory, the small reprimands have been renamed the small essentials. Well, shielded metal arc welding may appear drastic at the beginning, but the good news is you don't need many expensive tools. Here's your essential welding battle pack. A small welding machine. This is your power source and it exists in different sizes and types. No problem, we won't be going to the small stuff. Consult with a welding supply expert to choose the machine that suits your project the best. Electrodes. These are flame-coated rods that have a special flux on them which forms a gas shield to prevent the weld from getting contaminated. There are various electrode types for different metals, so just pick them wisely, my buddy. Electrode holder. This gun that has your electrode and is the link between the electrode and the welding machine is the body of the bad boy. Ground clamp. This locks firmly on top of your workpiece, thus finalizing the electrical circuit. Safety gear. This is the most essential factor. Obtain a solid quality welding helmet with the right type of shade for your application, fire-resistant welding gloves, sturdy boots, and fire-resistant clothing. Do not be a welder worm. Safety first, ace. Explaining welding positions. Welding positions are the positions of the pieces that are being joined and the knowledge of them is vital for a welder to become a good one. The plan of the head 1F, 1G is the simplest, similar to the welding of a seam on a flat table. Thus, it is the best for the beginners to practice their technique. In the horizontal position 2F, 2G, the weld is done on the horizontal plane of a vertical joint, the same way as a pipe is held upright on a workbench and welded. This position involves more accuracy since the metal is set vertically, but the weld bead runs horizontally. The 3F, 3G position is even more skillful because you are welding on a vertical wall while gravity is pulling the molten metal down, hence good technique is needed to fight this force. The overhead position 4F, 4G is the most difficult, which is the one that involves welding above one's head, where the gravity makes the molten metal to drip. Hence it becomes hard and it demands higher skills to be done safely and effectively. A grasp of the different views is necessary, since each of them shows the different problems. The letter codes F and G denote the type of joint being welded. F is the fillet welds which are most often used in T-joints, and G are the groove welds which are basically the butt joints where two pieces of metal are placed end to end. The whole process of learning all of these positions and joint types is the key to gaining versatility and the proficiency in welding. Small techniques in action. Mastery of the shot weld with the shielded metal arc. Welding methods include several essential steps. First, preparation is essential. Eliminate the dirt and smooth the metal surfaces to guarantee a good contact for the electricity and a sturdy weld. Then, secure your workpiece by clamping it down and attaching the ground clamp to the finished circuit for a safe work environment. The key to successful metal welding is the choice of the electrode that is, the right electrode for the metal that the worker is working, and the adjustment of the machine settings according to the electrode's recommendation. Get your hands and legs in the position where you are welding and make sure that you are comfortable. To start the weld, lightly tap the electrode tip on the metal to generate an arc, and keep a consistent distance of about 1 by 16 of an inch between the electrode tip and the workpiece for a good weld. The amount of welding width needed determines if you have to slightly move the electrode back and forth or a slight zigzag motion to create a wider weld bead. During the whole process, be watchful of the molten metal pool so that the penetration is correct and no metal is burned through. Additionally, maintaining focus is vital. 
The travel speed of the electrode and the angle of attack should be kept uniform in order to have a good weld. The electrode melts as you lower it towards the joint and feed more into the weld pool gradually, while you don't jab or force it and let it flow smoothly. After you have finished the weld right away, raise the electrode to stop the arc and thus to put it out. Once the weld has slightly cooled, use a chipping hammer to remove the slag from the weld to reveal your beautiful weld underneath. Remember, practice makes perfect. Proceed to acquire some scrap metal and then try out various welding positions and techniques. Every bead you lay down makes you a little bit closer to the master level in welding. SMA and the art of pipe welding. Pipeline welding is a whole new area, but with shielded metal art welding at your disposal, you can easily master it as well. Pipe welds often involve specific positions with fancy names like 2G, the way that it is similar to the regular horizontal position, but welding around a horizontal pipe. 5G, the pipe tilted at a 45 degree angle, is being welded on by you with your pipe in your direction. 6G, the pipe welding conundrum. The pipe would be tilted away from you at a 45 degree angle and the welding would have to be done on it. Talk about defying gravity. Level up your welding game beyond the basics. As you progress in your shielded metal art journey, you'll encounter more advanced concepts like travel speed, the speed at which you move the electrode along the joint. Too slow and you burn through the metal, too fast and you don't get proper penetration. That's why finding the sweet spot is key. Amperage, the amount of electrical current flowing through the electrode, which affects the heat input and penetration depth. Consult with an expert to find what works best for your project. Electrode selection, there's a whole world of electrodes out there, each with its strengths and weaknesses. Explore different types to find the perfect match for your metal and application. Maintain safety always. Hey, let's be honest. Welding is a skilled job that deserves respect. Therefore, safety must be the most important thing. Use suitable personal protective equipment such as a welding helmet with the right shade, fire-resistant clothes, gloves, and boots to stay safe while working on the welding job. Make sure your work area is tidy and well aerated since welding fumes are dangerous to health. Be aware of fire hazards. Shielding of the flammable materials from the welding sparks prevents their spread, which is why one should be clear of flammable stuff and have a fire extinguisher close by. Never weld on a container that has ever held flammable liquids or gases, because this can result in a dangerous explosion. Regardless of the situation, it is always necessary to adhere to the safety protocols in order not only to protect yourself, but also those around you. That's it for today. With dedication, practice, and the power of shielded metal. Arc welding. You'll be welding like a pro in no time. Remember, the only limit is your imagination. So grab your gear, strike an arc, and get ready to create something truly awesome. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more welding adventures. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video.